Good afternoon. Welcome to your 4 to 5. I'm Eric Chilton here with Tasha Moyes and Maddie Gardner. Yes, this is an interactive show meant to build you with your community and connect you to the world around us. And we do that by streaming live on our Facebook page and on YouTube. Yeah, just use our hashtag 4 to 5. That's the name of our show. You can see it at the bottom of your screen right now. Just make sure you mention that in your comments so we can see what you're saying. Yeah, that's WFMY News 2's YouTube and Facebook page. Don't forget that. Let's talk about our forecast because rain has been a problem for a while. But today we got a little bit of a break, right? I mean, I know it was small, but we got a little bit. Still a few showers are possible heading into the overnight tonight. 49 will be the overnight low tomorrow. Look at that high. 67 degrees. Our normal high should be in the upper 40s to right at, right at 50. And you're looking at 67. And morning showers. Now we might actually have a thunderstorm tomorrow morning. That is possible. Here's what the radar looks like now with the satellite information as well. Lots of cloud cover. The rain not all that uh, troublesome, but here comes the front and that really is a tomorrow morning situation. I want you to look at this timing real quick and as we head into the overnight and tomorrow morning between about 8 a.m. and maybe 1 p.m. That's when we expect to see some of the heavier showers and thunderstorms. After that, a quick clear out and we'll have clear skies as we head into your Friday and Saturday. Sunday may be rain free as well. We'll show you the seven day forecast coming up in a bit. We had some changes to that forecast and in some cases for the better. All right, you know, for the entire year so far for 2020, our temperatures, our high temperatures have been averaging about seven degrees mm. above normal on average for every day this year. Yeah, honestly, it feels like spring and right. it's not just for us, it's for our plants as well. But what happens when those temperatures swing back to winter? Which is happening this weekend, too. Mm. We'll see some overnight lows in the 20s. We went to the experts to find out. So Richard with New Garden Nursery with us today and we're talking about this unusually warm weather. I'm sure your clients are coming to and saying, what do I do? Yeah, I mean, a lot of customers come in on a daily basis asking, you know, what to do with their plants when it's going from hot to cold. Because we may go to 40s and 20s for highs and lows this weekend and all these plants think it's spring. What happens to them? Are we going to lose them all? Not going to lose them all, but there are some things you can do to protect your plants. And let's talk about that. So if a plant is in the ground, what do you do? Everybody says cover your plants. Does that really work? Yeah, in the ground you want to cover it. Um, for instance, I got a frost cloth out here today okay. to kind of show you guys. Um, this is something you would either want to put over your plants um, in the garden or say um, in the landscape. You basically want to put it over it, put some stakes in the ground or some bricks, just keep the wind from taking it away. And I've always heard too that the, the, this kind of cloth breathes and that's the key, right? You don't want to put like a trash bag over Correct. your Correct. This is breathable fabric so it will kind of give some flow in between the plant. Now what if you're potted like all these plants we see here? So for potted plants, there's a couple things you can do. Um, you can take them, um, cluster them together, bring them in and then another thing you can do is wrap the, the pots with some burlap or some plastic to insulate it. Just holds the heat in. You wouldn't necessarily have to cover those. I um, guess, if not. You could cover them as well, but again, that's just kind of insulating the soil and keeping it from freezing. So will we lose all of our plants or just some of them? It's those? hard to say. With plants, you, you could. Um, there is that possibility. Is there any way that, do the plants do anything themselves to protect against the cold? Or um, Well, this time of year, they're supposed to be dormant, but oh, it being yeah. 70 degrees in February, it is um, keeping that from happening. So we're going to have acceptable losses. That's yes, sir. what it boils down to. All right, there you have it. Yeah, basically, he was saying too that um, some plants, whenever they'll, and so this weekend we'll see 24 for an overnight low Friday night to Saturday morning. He said some of the plants will literally start to kind of like recess a little bit, go back into a dormant stage. They try to. That is stressful on the plants. You can lose some. You probably won't lose all of them. It always makes me sad when the trees bloom and then we get that late frost and it kills everything. Yeah, that, it, it can happen. He said it stresses them out. Any plants that flower, this was interesting to me, he said if they flower, those are the ones that you might lose before the hardier ones. It's like the winners and the losers really of the weather when it changes like that. As we may enjoy the warm weather when it comes, it's like our, our plants. And really agriculture, suffering. yeah, agriculture, and our farmers, and, yep. yeah. and all of that. Keep them in mind. All right, well, we want to get you to this headline, a pretty big one here. A Winston-Salem woman is one of many passengers stuck on a cruise ship that's quarantined for coronavirus. Candace Colesleizer is stranded. Her pastor, Alvin Armstead of United Methodist Missionary Baptist Church, says she works on the Diamond Princess cruise ship. That ship has been quarantined since February the 3rd. Now, the cruise was coming back from a 14-day tour in Japan. Authorities said an 80 year old man on board tested positive for coronavirus at the Hong Kong port. There are now 174 confirmed cases on the ship. 39 of those cases are new reports from just today. Cole Cleasure is a performer, we're told, on that ship. 
Now, as new reported cases continue to rise, North Carolina health officials are taking action. Now, the state is currently at a low risk, but precautions are in place. There's actually a special hotline that has been set up where you can call to get some more information. And our own Chad Silber is live at that headquarters in Charlotte. Chad, what have you learned at the center today? Hey, Tahesha. Uh, yes, so North Carolina was actually one of the first states in the country to set up a dedicated helpline meant for coronavirus, both questions and concerns. And we're actually in that room right now. This is actually the North Carolina Poison Control Center, but all of these um, nurses and pharmacists are answering calls 24 seven around the clock, and they've been doing it for almost two weeks now. They've actually had more than 150 calls from people who both have concerns about coronavirus, but also just kind of questions, you know, can you get coronavirus just by flying on an airplane? So we're going to kind of go over some of these questions here over the next couple of hours. We've also been getting a lot of uh, questions about the coronavirus symptoms. So I want to break all this down for you. Common symptoms make it look like it's the flu, uh, fever, dry cough, mild breathing, difficulty at and body aches. If not treated, symptoms can get worse, like high fever, pneumonia, kidney failure, even death. Now, we know that you have plenty of questions, and that's why we're here. So if you're watching on a live stream right now, whether you're on our website or on our Facebook page, you can go to our Facebook page and in the live stream, ask any questions that you have, because we've got a lot of medical experts here. I'm going to get those questions answered for you. And if you just have any questions at any point, this is the number to call. This is the coronavirus helpline. It's 866-462-3821. Again, we're going to be here for the next couple of hours answering your questions. Chad, thank you. Now, Governor Roy Cooper just established a coronavirus task force, and that task force is working with the CDC to coordinate state agencies. State and local health officials are also evaluating possible cases and monitoring some testing. Officials told WFMI News 2 their preparedness is what helps keep our state's risk so low. People know to say that I have been to China. Healthcare providers know to ask, have you had been to China? So well, this is on high alert, and I think this is actually our preparedness working very well. Now, as you heard Chad say, the symptoms of coronavirus are very similar to the flu. To protect yourself, wash your hands with soap and warm water for 20 seconds. Make sure you're covering your mouth and your nose with your tissue or your sleeve, not your hands if you're coughing or sneezing. Of course, you want to stay away from sick people if you can and then stay home if you are sick. And I know this is a lot of information it that is. we just threw at you in about six minutes. So if you missed any of that information, uh, all you have to do is text this number. It's 336-379-5775 and text the word virus to that number and it will send you to a link to our website that has all the information uh, that you'll need to know. And that gives you everything you need to know about that task force and pretty much answers, I'd say, most of your questions. There. Right. All right, you have more news to get to this afternoon. Let's check out your four to five roundup. Greensboro police arrested a man they believe is connected to a murder from 2012. Jack Coker Jr. is charged with killing Paula Nix. Nix's body was found behind a church on Randolph Avenue. Police say she died from blunt force trauma. A judge just overturned a decision from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill to give Silent Sam to the sons of Confederate veterans. That settlement gave the rights of Silent Sam to the group, along with more than $2 million to take care of the statue. But the judge determined that the Sons of Confederate Veterans had no grounds for argument over Silent Sam. So today is the last day for you to complete Greensboro's affordable housing survey. The city is looking at four key concerns. Affordable rental housing, neighborhood revitalization, supportive housing, and affordable home ownership. So you have to take the survey by 5 o'clock this afternoon, and all of the responses will go into the 10-year affordable housing plan. Okay, moms and dads, come a little closer because we need to have a heart to heart. I know all parents think their baby is the cutest, but is your son or daughter actually the cutest baby in the world? Because Gerber is looking for their next spokes baby, and it could be your child. All you have to do is submit the cutest picture of your little one. We have all the instructions for you on our website, WFMINews2.com. Keep in mind, all Gerber baby spokes people must be younger than four years old. Uh, you can go ahead and count to ten. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And then you can go ahead and count ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, was the audio good on that second one? Yep. Early voters in Forsyth County, when you go to vote, you'll see a proposed sales tax increase on your ballot. The Winston-Salem Forsyth County School District says that the quarter cent increase would help te uh, would help supplement teacher pay. Yeah, so Val Young and Barbara Bell are with us today. So do you think that this would help, this sales tax increase? Definitely. I do really think that it will help um, to recruit our best of the best to stay here and to come here. How do you think Forsyth County, if you were to stack uh, Forsyth County against other counties in the state and in the area, how do you think they stack up against others? We're 23rd in supplement, but we're the fifth largest um, district, so we're pretty low in our supplement. And that's out of 100. If you think about 100 counties in the entire state. You know, Very low. Right. Yes. And what would something like this mean for teachers? I mean, because you, you were in the classroom, so what would this mean for you? Um, well, it, it's it's great because it's not only for uh, beginning teachers in, in the pa several past years um, most of the raises have gone towards uh, beginning teachers but it's for all teachers and so um, myself I'm a veteran teacher I haven't seen any kind of a pay bump in it in a really long time yeah and you're taking a look at some of the statistics there uh, for Scythe County lowest in supplement pay here 15 percent of teachers leave the district each year and that is up to about 540 teachers a year right now currently in Forsyth County 30 unfilled positions for teachers so the question that you said but not everything is taxed uh, uh, additionally is that correct how does that work explain that correct groceries um, if you purchase a car a home pharmaceuticals things of that nature that are essentials are not going to be taxed so if this is so you think about it, you know, voters, I'm assuming, they have to say that this is okay, right, before we get mm -hmm. things going. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a hard sell for mm -hmm. the average person. What would you say to them if you're talking to them right now and say, this is how important this is? How do you explain that, I guess? I want people to look at it as, I want the best in front of my child and every, every other person's child. So I want to recruit the best candidates that I can. I want to keep the best candidates I can. And I want to bring back those people that have, have exit to come back home. So look at it as putting the best person possible in front of everybody's child. Because it's sometimes it's hard to think, you know, as a, a average person who may not have a child, they're like, you know what, I don't want to have a sales tax increase. And you're saying you need to look at it from a different point of view. Exactly. I don't have any children. However, when I step foot into a classroom of 25, every single child is my child. Um, my nephews, my 
my great niece are going to be going through Winston Salem Forsyth County School, and I want the best of the best for them. Yeah. It's very true. You think about whether you have kids or not, it's the future. Mm -hmm. Really, it's our future period. You just mm -hmm. draw the line right there mm -hmm. what Absolutely. we're doing. Mm -hmm. I thank you for coming on and explaining this more. I do want to point out before we let you go that when voters see this on the ballot, it won't say this, 20, right. this quarter cent increase is going towards schools. It will just ask you if you support that, so yes. it's not going to be laid out. Thanks, guys, for coming Thank in. You. Thank yep, you. We appreciate it. We're taking a break. Be right back. Welcome back to the four to five. Here's a question for you. What are the top 20 things in Greensboro that you would recommend to a first time visitor? We want you to share your favorite spots on our live feed and we'll read some of your comments in just a moment. But maybe some of these places come to mind. How about the Carolina Theater, even the Antique Marketplace and the Bland Wood Mansion? Yeah, the website Money Inc put out its list of the best places to visit in Greensboro. If you've never been here before, let's take a look at a few of these and see if you agree. Make sure you're commenting. So number 20 here is the history historic Carolina Theater that was followed by the Antique Marketplace that is home to 150 antique vendors. Number 18 on the list was the historic Blandwood Mansion on Washington Street in downtown Greensboro. 17 was the Greensboro Coliseum Complex. Really no surprise there. Up next is LeBauer Park. It's free. It's an excellent choice for entertaining the little ones. At 15 was Wet n Wild Emerald Point with its 36 water rides. 14 was the Bog Garden at Benjamin Park. An important history lesson came in at 13, the International Civil Rights Center and Museum. And up next, another family fun venture at the Ice House. Great ice skating for all ages. Finally, number 11 here, Celebration Station with rides, mini golf, and more than 100 video games in the arcade. Also where I had my seventh birthday party. Oh, very nice. Celebration Station. We're going to <laughs> reveal the top 10 in the next half hour. So as you all know, I'm getting married. And so I get ads served to me on Facebook. And two places that always pop up, LaBauer Park and Blandwood Mansion, because they're saying you should to get married here. Oh, yeah, they're yes. watching. That's interesting. Yeah, and I've never been to uh, Blandwood Mansion, so I need it's to actually cool. go write that down on my list of things to do. It's, it's actually very cool. All right, let's check in with uh, Brian Bennett. We'll see what folks are saying on our live stream today, Brian. Um, we are still waiting for people to chime in on their best 
um, things to do in Greensboro. But I would have to say, if it was up to me, it would be like food, you know? Like oh, yum yes. yum, right. get some ice cream, uh, Hops Burger Bar, of course. Oh, yeah. uh, Stamies, you gotta get the barbecue mm -hmm. in, right? So you're all about the food. Always. I have to be real with everyone. Oh, I've goodness. never been to Yum Yum's, and I love hot dogs. <laughs> like, do? one of my favorite foods. And it's, I still have never been. It's an institution. We've gotta go. I like, the fancy, I like the fancier meals. I'm just, I've always been like, I like, like 16, 18, a great oh. restaurant, undercurrent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so some of those, and when we're in our top 10 list coming up in just a minute, you may hear some restaurants mentioned there. Yeah, and some of the people ask me, what do you do outside of Greensboro? And I'm like, most of my things are go to the gym or eat. So I'm always <laughs> at some restaurant finding something good. Go to the gym so you can eat. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's there what we it go. is. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stay there. Here's a startling statistic from the CDC that may affect you. About one in seven families are struggling to pay for medical bills here in America. That's about 14 percent of people. That's according to a 2018 national survey. It's a big drop from 2011, but only a slight drop from 2016 and 17. Experts point to two factors to determine whether a family struggles with medical bills. It's insurance coverage and income levels. They also say the type of coverage matters. More plans are requiring thousands of dollars in deductibles or other out of pocket payments. And speaking of medical bills, this actually really got us talking in the newsroom. A rural county in Kansas is putting people in jail for unpaid medical bills. Let's take a closer look at this and really explain what we're talking about here. It's part of a law in Kofiville. It says people with unpaid medical bills must appear in court every three months, which is hard for many people. So during those hearings, debt collectors assess the situation and they attempt to negotiate a payment plan. If two of those hearings are missed, the judge issues an arrest warrant for contempt of court and their bail is set at $500. What's happening here is a jailhouse shakedown for cash. That is the criminalization of private debt. All right, so that's a representative from the ACLU. They found that tens of thousands of these arrest warrants are issued each year and sometimes it's to collect as little as $28.
Yeah, and this really is a reality for some people. CBS News talked with one family. The dad had to go to jail because he missed those two court dates in a row. Now, at the time, his son was undergoing leukemia treatments and his wife had a heart condition because she suffers from seizures. Now, in the meantime, they were buried with medical debt, about 70,000. He was arrested and he couldn't afford to post that bail. He says he only got out because a friend bailed him out. And that is where we are now in that state and in that area. A uh, very controversial law uh, and ProPublica, they did a really great in-depth investigation on how people in that community are really struggling because they're getting hit with those medical bills and sometimes unable to show up for court. It almost sounds like, and I said this a little while ago, but it, uh, uh, off camera, we were in the commercial break, but it almost sounds like it's just a money maker. Like that 28 bucks was that one person right. that, you know, is that worth sending somebody to jail over? It almost seems like they're just racking in money with the county or whoever. Yeah. I'm not I sure. I can imagine it creates a backlog in courts Absolutely as well. And I does. wonder if it keeps criminal cases from going to trial or if it's separate at all. But uh, that, that would concern me. Right, right. And a lot of people concerned about this on our on my Facebook page. So I asked people, you know, what would you do in this situation? I mean, how do you feel about this, Brian? A lot of people aren't liking this decision. Yes, you're exactly right. Uh, a lot of people are actually agreeing with one commenter by the name of Ruth. So uh, let's go ahead and bring up her comment right now. She says, what should be illegal is the ridiculous charges on hospital bills to begin with. Uh, and Mr. Smith says, milking their community for finances, is it legal? Illegal, my question. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Elizabeth says, are you serious? The man's child has leukemia. What is the state? that is called the United States of America. People are uh, pretty much just frustrated with this. So if we can get one more in here, uh, one more comment here if we can. Or is, okay, this comes from Cherokee. She says, uh, I would do the same for my son. So people are pretty much upset about this whole right. ordeal. Yeah, meaning that last comment, they would go and be with their son instead of being in a court. Yes, right, absolutely. Yeah. No question on that. All right, let's get to a forecast. Quick uh, showers. Yeah, we might get a little bit of a break by, well, it'll take us probably through most of the day tomorrow. I want you to look at the map here. Low pressure system approaches, so we'll see our heaviest rains when that front moves by. That's tomorrow morning between about 8 and, say, well, noon, maybe 1 p.m. Then by tomorrow evening, we clear out, and it'll be cooler and breezy, and we see big changes in our temperatures. Tonight, the overnight low 49, tomorrow very mild with a high of 67. We'll have the seven day coming up for you in just a second. Chilly this weekend. Hey guys, and remember it's kind of like that weird thing where I'm by A Tech and then Moby's going to be by A and then meet me at the table?
good afternoon and welcome back to the four to five. I'm Maddie Gardner here with Eric Chilton and Tahitia Moy. Yes, we are here to inform you and make you feel connected and let you into our world. That's why I have two phones. We're all, we are streaming all live kind of on YouTube and we're also <laughs> streaming live on the WFMY News 2 Facebook Listen, page. Listen, if you're trying to find some connected people, we have them right here. We got that right. <laughs> Multiple devices. All right, um, so we're also going to talk about the forecast because we are noticing some changes in the rainfall amounts that we're going to see not only in the short term but also in the long term. I want you to look at the radar because it looks a little bit better today, doesn't it? Not quite as bad. We've actually had not really much in the way of any significant rain at the airport so far. Go out to a wider shot and we see the frontal system. Yeah, we'll get here probably tomorrow morning. And that honestly is when we see the strongest shower activity. This is um, one of those situations where it could be heavy. We might even see a thunderstorm, which is unusual for us, not only this time of the year, but that time of the day. That'll be between that probably 8 a.m. and say 1 p.m. time period. Here's your seven day forecast. So today and tonight the rain not all that prevalent. You might see a spit of rain here or there. 67 tomorrow. That's way above our normal of 52. 80% chance of a shower or storm in the in the first half of the day. After that a clear out Valentine's Day and through the weekend we're cooler and sunny. It'll be a little breezy on Friday with a high of 46. 42 on Saturday. 51 Sunday with a couple clouds. Rain chances back in Tuesday, Wednesday 61 and 54. All right, let's get to some of your headlines with the four to five roundup. Greensboro police say a woman accused of stealing $800 from a 92 year old man in December is in trouble once again. Keisha Davis was charged Tuesday for assaulting a, a deaf woman at a Starbucks on Pitka Church Road. Now it is a developing story. We have all the latest details for you on WFMYNews2.com. Well, there was a ribbon cutting for Cone Health Women's and Children's Center at Moses Cone Hospital this morning. The labor and delivery rooms feature hidden lights that lower as needed. It's a cool feature there. The patient rooms also have a pass through for meals and supplies so they can have more peace and quiet in their room. The neonatal intensive care unit has 45 private rooms and the center officially opens on Sunday, February 23rd. The FBI is now investigating in involved, I should say, in the search for a missing six-year-old South Carolina girl, Faye Swetlick, was reported missing Monday after school and she was last seen playing in her front yard. Authorities say that her mother was home when Faye disappeared. WCNC in Charlotte spoke with her father who lives in Rowan County. He says that he hasn't seen Faye since Christmas. Now the father was planning to see her this weekend. Faye's situation does not meet the criteria for an Amber Alert, but a special tip line is set up. You can see that number there on your screen. Um, all right, and our last story here. Bernie Sanders won the popular vote in the New Hampshire primary. Former Mayor Pete Buttigieg places second. Now Sanders only beat Buttigieg by 2%. Senator Amy Klobuchar uh, was third. And this is the second time that Sanders won over New Hampshire voters. All right, so you heard us talk about Iowa, now New Hampshire. When do North Carolinians get to vote? Well, early voting starts soon, and a couple of candidates are going to visit North Carolina to campaign. Mike Bloomberg will be in Winston-Salem and Greensboro tomorrow. This is actually Bloomberg's third visit to North Carolina. He'll be in Winston-Salem at 7 in the morning and in Greensboro by 9 o'clock. Now, WFMY News 2, of course, we are covering his visit to the triad, so we'll keep you updated both on air and online. Now, Bloomberg is not the only candidate visiting tomorrow. Senator Bernie Sanders will be stopping in Durham and Charlotte. He will stop at the Durham Convention Center at 1130 and will make it to Charlotte by 330. In the meantime, a High Point University poll concludes that voters prefer, uh, prefer, uh, prefer, I should say, Senator Bernie Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden. Now, Sanders is leading Biden 25 to 19 percent for registered voters in the Democratic planning to vote in the primary. Now, Michael Bloomberg has 13 percent of the vote. Warren has 12 percent and Pete Buttigieg has 6 percent. Well, Valentine's Day is this Friday and, you know, serenading your sweetheart. It's really not an option for all of us, me, but core students at Southwest Guilford High School have the pipes to help out. They're delivering singing Valentine's over the phone. So if you're looking for a harmonious relationship, this might help. Inside the choral room of Southwest Guilford High School, something extraordinary is going on. 
Teacher Catherine Butler is making a pitch for a new way to say I love you with I a singing you. valentine. I love you. We are, we are booked. Um, they are rolling in as we speak every day. Another kid brings me a stack from mom or dad's office and we sell them at lunch. And teachers think it's an easy and great way to send love to their parent or their child or just a special someone in their life. But making 300 phone calls to deliver those Valentines isn't as easy as... One, two, three. We have multiple phones going across the school. I take any office that's available and squish 12 kids in there and give them a stack of order forms and they just stay, start making calls. The chorus sells these melodic messages for $5 a call as a way to raise money for the program. We use it to tune our new piano to um, help offset the cost of field trips when kids um, can't afford to go on the field trip or to pay registration fees. Um, we have to buy all of the music that we sing. Butler carried the telephone tradition over with her to Southwest six years ago. In between rehearsing challenging songs for competition and finding perfect harmony, these students just wanted to. to say, I love you. And wish others a Happy Valentine's Day. So talented. That last song, that is the song that I would pick. That I just called to say I love yeah, you. I mean, that's well, the perfect it is singing funny telegram you should song. should say that because it is their most popular really? request. Because you're getting a telephone call. It's perfect. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I love that song. Yeah. They're really talented. All right, so I asked you on Facebook if you had to serenade your sweetheart, what song would it be? <laughs> Brian Bennett. <laughs> We're going to put you in the hot seat. Yeah, what would I want you, to know your I'm always answer. in the hot seat, apparently. Uh, but Phil says, uh, what did you say, Maddie? No, what do you, what what do would you, you say? say? Your wife. Oh, mm, I that's also want to hear what Phil Well, said. our wedding song was uh, John Legend, uh, was it So High? So high. You better really remember. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Right. You better remember that one. Yeah. So high. Stevie Wonder, My Sharia Moore. You can have oh, genuine good differences. One. I mean, the list can go on and on, so but it's good. not about us, guys. Oh, okay. Right? I'm sorry. But uh, we did get a comment from uh, Phil who says, uh, Wonderful Tonight by uh, Eric Clapton. Oh, that's a great one. Is that a great one? That's yep. a good one. Eric, you have the pipes. Tasha, you do too. Tayshia well, I'm like, did you hear my rendition <laughs> of the right Star Spangled Banner yesterday? No, no let me that tell you. Good. She can really sing. Can. That was goofing around. Yeah. She can really sing. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you, but not right now. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I'm I got not nothing. Doing that. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, let us know in the comments if you are watching on our YouTube stream and on our Facebook stream because we'd love to bring you into this conversation because yes. you know sometimes during the breaks we play some music. Mm -hmm. We do. And so this is part of the music. Thing. Conversation. Right. So we join like us it. in here. We have been known to dance on occasion too. <laughs> Let, let's see what Tanya has for us today. All right, what I want you to do is take a look at this graphic because it shows the number of people shopping online worldwide. In 2014, there were 1.32 million people. In 2020, it's expected to be 2 billion people. That means 26% of the world population is shopping online. That is one in four people. My guess is that one in four of these peoples, or four in four of these peoples, shop online. Am I right? I think Always. I shopped yes. online today. Yeah, right. I got my Amazon package. So. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, so there's good and bad with any kind of shopping. So I want to know what your downsides are to online shopping. I can't physically see and touch what I'm buying. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, one quality. For me. Things uh, don't fit sometimes or it's not quite exactly what you thought you were ordering. That's a big one. For mine me. is too easy. It's so easy that I'm, I think I'm more tempted to buy because it's like click. <laughs> oh, it's right. There's easy. not really money coming out of anything. Right. right. It's I'm, just a uh -huh. click. Ding, 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 right. ding. Yeah. Okay. So two wants to know recently found this right here. See that I want you to check this out. It's an online checkout. It lists how much you'll be paying the discount and the final bill. What you might not pay attention to is this right here. It simply says learn more and it has no effect on your bill or so it seems but when you do actually click on it to learn more it says hey you're signing up for a 49 dollars charge every single month and you know what i recognize that company because i was gonna buy something and then i really? read the fine print and i said mm -hmm. no i'm not signing up for this it's sneaky it though. Is. yes i don't it like is. it, it right, because you illegal. look at the whole thing and you see how much you're being charged and that does not have a charge no. anywhere and it just sneaks up on you and it shows up on your next bill? Yes, it does. So it's legal, 
Uh, so, which is, you know, we're all kind of like, really, should it be legal? But it's certainly not nice, right? And so tonight on Two Wants to Know at 545, we're going to take a look at the complaints about this, uh, how difficult it is to get your money back, and also what card to use to best protect yourself when you shop online. That's coming up. My check one too. Uh, UNC, they're worse yeah. than they're the Listen, worst team. They're the worst Listen. team in the conference. Hold on, everyone. Dude, Calm down. Numbers don't lie. Back to Well, unfortunately for these Tar Heel fans, it's time to talk sports. Luke Lydon is here. I'm excited. I tried to, to get out of this segment, but uh, they wouldn't let me. So I ahead. almost don't want to talk about it, knowing the ties you guys have to okay. the heels. We can change the subject. No, no, no. got to talk about it. You're right. Okay, well, put it simply, it's pretty bad. Um, Wake has not beaten the Heels. They haven't beaten the Heels since 2014. Of course, last night they finally got the big victory. It was pretty surprising, but all good things must come to an end, I suppose. Now the Heels are tied for last in the ACC. UNC, that just doesn't sound right. You know, at one point Wake was up 26 points. Eric Chilton, I know you know oh, this. Oh, I know. Uh, I was against there. the Heels last <laughs> night. It was, it was clear UNC, they didn't have the energy to match uh, the Deeks. Even crazier, something you never believe I'd say. The Heels have lost 14 of their last 19 <laughs> matchups. They're now in a four-game losing skid. The uh, only chance I feel like this team would ever make the tournament is if they win the ACC tournament, which at this point seems a little unlikely. Unless there's crazy upsets in the first few rounds. That's right. I like an underdog story, folks. Let's do I'll it. Pull for it. <laughs> well, I'm just going to throw my foot in my mouth here and say congratulations to Wake Forest. There you I go. go. I'm talking That's about true. Very Thank you so much. We're going to say congratulations because they true. won. I will wish them a congratulations as well. I, like I can Wake. be a gracious loser okay. here. Okay. You could always, worst comes to worst. Don't you, even say it. Could be a Duke fan. Hmm? No. Uh, Are you saying <laughs> Let me switch? check the fine print on switch. my contract. Check the fine print. I think they would take away diplomas at that point. Uh, but <laughs> all might. jokes aside, you've got to think Saturday's loss, so high energy, so high emotion, along with the, in, in, uh, the injuries, excuse me, they've had all year. I think it played a big part uh, to UNC struggling. It's so weird to see UNC, not to be rude, but to be so bad because we're right. so used to that sustained success. And this time around, it's... We were looking at the numbers in the newsroom. Last time they were below 500 was 01. 
So it's been almost 20 years since they've had a sub 500 yeah. season. I guess it's time for one of those rebuilding yes. years. Yeah, it is. Maybe. Sadly. But I yes. know. Even crazier, um, I saw a stat last night. The last time Wake Forest and UNC had played each other with records under 500, both of them, just take a guess. When was it? Both of them? Both of them. 2000. 87. 1919. Oh, Are you kidding me? Yeah. Basketball was Isn't that crazy? Was it, was, yeah, it was basketball wow. even around was that back invented then? before that? I know. So th that just goes to show you how good UNC has been, and this is kind of an anomaly, I think, That's amazing. just that, how bad they've been this year. But still talking about uncertainty, switching over to the gridiron, Cam Newton and the Panthers. What, what's going on with number one? We all want to think, is he staying? Is he going? Is he healthy? We won't know, of course, until Newton fully rehabs, which is expected to be around March next month. But owner David Tepper, he had a few thoughts. Take a listen. Listen, I'm not a doctor. You know, I, and I said it a million times, is he, good, is he healthy? And how does, I mean, he's not a doctor. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, different things can happen. But first is, is he healthy? Tell me that and then we can talk. Okay, well, he's not a doctor. <laughs> I'm not um, a doctor, are you a doctor? I don't think any of us are okay. doctors. No, last check. What do you think? I mean, I, it's still, there's been so much speculation about Cam Newton. It's, I think it's still too early to tell. There are a lot of different quarterbacks on the market, but I mean, we've seen all the turnover from all the players earlier mm -hmm. in the offseason. What do you guys think? It seems like Tepper's not playing around, and I if think. there mm -hmm. is that level of uncertainty, he might go in another direction. Yeah. I think he, he is, well, he's shown that when he comes in, he makes decisions, he does things his way. And I think just by the tone and that bite, sound bite, that he might be like, eh, not so sure about right. him right now. Yeah, I really think it is 50-50. I mean, if he's healthy and he shows his shoulder and his foot are truly good to go, I think they keep him. But if not, I think they'll go in the other direction. And I mean, he's not afraid to ruffle some feathers. No. I mean, he's already done that. So yeah. we'll just have to wait and see. <sighs> Both my teams <laughs> rebuilding. I know. Uh, this is going to be a rough year for I Maddie. Know. Me too. <laughs> it's, a, it's a process. It is a process. We'll get there. Thanks, Lou. Right, I think. We're, we're coming Maybe. back. Stay we'll there. See. Hi there, A Tech, A Tech, A Tech. You know what? I think having a cheer from Maddie and some stunts from Chilton will turn the season around. I think so. Let's try it.
Earlier, we started our top 20 list of must-sees in Greensboro for the first-time visitor. Yeah, this list was published on a website. It was called... Money Go back Inc. up. Money Inc. Yes. <laughs> I went too far, went too far here on here for her. I went too fast. So we went from 20 to 11 earlier, but now we're going to give you the, the top 10 here. All right, so we're going to start with number 10. It takes us to the Undercurrent oh, Restaurant in downtown yes. Greensboro. They say it's a great romantic spot, so it would be a good spot maybe for tomorrow, or I should say Friday for Valentine's Day. Number nine is the Guilford County Military Park. It's mm. a beautiful place there. Number eight, Pig Pounder Brewery. Number seven, Gateway Gardens. And number six, the Greensboro Children's Museum. That's a really great place to take, one. especially the younger kids if you have family coming in. Uh, next up, uh, we have some gardens, the Greensboro Arboretum and the Tanger Family Bicentennial Garden. I love walking around there. Um, in the Bicentennial Garden, you can write a note into and just I've place it this. in there. Yes. And there's little pens and pads of paper, so I always like doing that. Uh, number three is another history lesson at the Greensboro Historical Museum. Number two, the Weatherspoon Art Museum in downtown Greensboro. And number one, really no surprise because we know just how much people love this place. And Eric Chilton loves this place, the Greensboro Science Center coming in at number one. It's a good list. And they're expanding all the time. They are. So I posted this on Facebook page. I wanted to see what, what you would put up there. And we'll check in with Brian now. What were people saying online about that? Yep, uh, people are saying a lot. Uh, Alex actually said, Alex actually works here. So I got to give a shout out to Alex. Love her. Uh, she says, Boxcar uh, and Arcade. She would take somebody there. Uh, Steve Ford says, Fisher Park. Uh, Claire says, ACC oh, Hall yeah. of Champions. I forgot about that. Uh, Mr. David Williams says, the Greensboro Coliseum Complex. A lot of things go down there. Uh, Scott says, uh, the Bog Garden. Mm -hmm. um, and Carolyn says, the Greensboro Science Center. And that came at number one, so she was on to something, right? Yeah, and there was actually some people on our live stream when we talked about this in our first half hour. Kim wrote, Jiho. Oh, oh, yeah. For oh, Aggie Pride. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is the place to be. I, I, I don't know why, what it is about that weekend. People invite me to go tailgating, and for some reason, I'm always out of town. And I always have to say we no. Write it down. It I need to write yes. it down because I need to go this year. I bet the only reason it wasn't on the list is because it's not permanent. Right. Oh, yeah, something you could do all mm -hmm. the time. That's true. That Very brings true. in a lot of people. Does. You're not kidding. Walk Elm Street on that homecoming weekend, and it's packed with Aggie fans and alumni. It's awesome. Yeah. It's a blast. Someone else said the Farmer's Curb Market, which is near the station up here. Yes. Yeah, it's open on and Sunday. it's returning back on to the Curb Market. It's coming weekend. It's coming back say. to its yeah. original yeah. spot. So go back to the original spot <laughs> if you were going down the road. <laughs> yeah. Because they've moved back. You sound like you're from the country. If you're yeah. down the road a bit, you got to come on back. Once That's you right. see the gas station, take a left. That's right. Get a sweet tea and then head by my mama's right. house because she'll get you some cupcakes and you can be on your way. Don't you know where that rock used to be about five years ago? You take a left by that. That's what cracks me up. All right, okay. let's look at our forecast and see what's going on. <laughs> That's old man Kelsey's farm. That's where you turn over there. Uh, 67 degrees tomorrow, and we have an 80% chance of rain. That will be probably the first half of the day. I think it gets out of here by lunchtime or maybe a little bit after that. That's a warm high temperature, though. Our normal high is 52 this time of the year. And then you're looking at uh, 46. Big change for Friday. Valentine's Day, lots of sunshine. It'll be breezy and cooler. The coldest low Saturday morning, 23 degrees with a high of 42. Sunday, partly cloudy. Our weekend, basically sunny to partly cloudy and 51 for Sunday. Next week, 57 and 61 for Monday, Tuesday. A little rain slips back in by Monday night and into Tuesday. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5, more than half of women say they would break up with their significant other if they don't get a gift on Valentine's Day. That's according to a new study. Your thoughts? Too harsh? Pretty accurate? Go to my Facebook page to weigh in. We will share some of your comments next on WFMY News 2 at 5.
Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Hi, Callie, 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 Callie. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check. Check one, two, three. I'm in the virtual set, right? Check, check, check. It is um, 104. Hi, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii. It's time for My Two Cents, where we pick a topic, talk about it, and hopefully get you thinking as well. I want to talk about personal space, because the more I live, the more I realize everyone is not on the same page. Here are a few examples that just make me upset, probably more than they should. First is the self-checkout line at Walmart. You know how they have those aisles with the long belts? Well, the other day, some person came right up behind me and started placing their items down, basically touching my items, and then they didn't even use the divider. Uh, hello, person here, not trying to pay for your things too. At least have a foot of space. Next, let's go to the gym. Can someone explain to me why when there are five treadmills open in a row, that the one that person chooses to get on is the one directly next to me? I don't know if it's a motivation thing, but I would love to know what's going on in that person's mind. Now this last one may be a bit of a stretch on personal space invasion, but I hate it when someone is following me too closely when I'm driving, especially when I'm going the speed limit and I'm not in the fast lane. It's not going to make me move any faster. I know I can't be alone and thinking those things are annoying, right? For me, it all comes down to a lack of respect and not following the golden rule. We are living on this earth together. Let's not make things difficult for others. Form your own opinion. That's just my two cents. That's your four to five. WFMY News 2 at five starts right now. to know that she's even out on the streets again. A Greensboro woman arrested again after allegedly assaulting an elderly woman at Starbucks. Police charge Keisha Davis, who's accused of a similar attack last December. WFMY News 2's Grace Holland shows